Hello, accounting scholars. Welcome to section two of chapter five. Hey, so we're going to talk about uh, some more pricing strategies. And the strategies that we're going to specifically talk about are price skimming and price gouging. Uh, you may be familiar with price skimming uh, in terms of what went on when Apple introduced the iPhone 1. Uh, you might remember that the price point they selected for that, uh, that first version of the iPhone was actually uh, around $800. Now, their, their strategy there was to set a selling price that was high and they knew they could probably reach a reasonable proportion of the customers who were willing to pay that higher price in order to be first. Um, these people are sometimes called early adopters. So that would be a price skimming strategy. On the other hand, a price gouging strategy would involve setting a selling price to take advantage of a temporary increase in demand. And you see this a lot uh, with gas stations after a natural disaster. You know, for instance, when Katrina uh, occurred in the New Orleans area, uh, many of the gas stations were accused of price gouging because those gas stations that had actually had gas that weren't damaged by Hurricane Katrina actually uh, resulted in raising gas prices to like ten dollars a gallon, you know. And so they were accused of gouging. When that occurs, that's illegal, and typically they would be fined and or thrown in jail. So that's the difference between the two strategies. Okay, um, let's talk about life cycle pricing and target pricing. Not target as it relates to the store, but target as it relates to a particular price point that you would like to uh, maintain. So life cycle pricing basically um, starts with setting a selling price that can be maintained over the life cycle of the product. Uh, by life cycle, we mean uh, products just like humans, right, go through phases. The, the first phase is kind of the birth and introduction. The second phase is the maturation phase of the product. And then the third phase is kind of the end of life of the product, you know. Basically, uh, the product no longer has value, and therefore it's discontinued or replaced by another product. So, uh, so through those three phases, introduction, maturity, and end of life, uh, in the life cycle pricing, uh, their, their, the objective is to maintain that selling price over, the, over that total cycle of the product, but you start by determining what your costs are. And then you add a markup, um, you add uh, an amount to the cost to determine your ultimate selling price. So that is life cycle pricing. Uh, on the other hand, uh, target pricing basically takes the opposite approach. It is setting a selling, pr mar selling price that can be maintained over the uh, the life of the product, but the selling price is determined first as opposed to starting with the cost. In target pricing, you start by setting the price and then you figure out how much you need to make uh, and subtract that amount from the selling price to get your, to get your cost. So life cycle, start with the cost and figure out your selling price, target pricing, start with the selling price, and then figure out what your costs need to be. Okay, so uh, we're pretty much going to end our discussion of pricing here, but now we're going to talk a little bit about inventory. Um, and as this picture shows, you know, uh, if, for those of you that work 
in a retail store, whether it's Kmart or Target, uh, you know, there is a a particular uh, strategy that all those retail establishments employ. Um, and the reason they do that is because there's very specific reasons on why you want to have inventory. First of all is to meet uh, customer demand. Um, when you think about this, let's say you want to buy a case for your smartphone. If you go to a store and they're all out of cases, um, what will you do? You walk out of the store and you'll find another store that has smartphone cases in stock. Uh, so the store you walked out of, in essence, lost that sale because they didn't have inventory available for you to purchase. So uh, a smart uh, a smart retail establishment will never sell out uh, unless it's it's intentionally. Uh, the second reason you want to have inventory is to maintain uh, a smooth production operation. Uh, you can, can you imagine if you owned a factory and you hired workers, uh, you'd want to be able to run that factory at a constant rate each day. So, you know, you know, you would not uh, one day uh, be producing 10,000 items and then the next day producing zero and having your, your manufacturing workers standing around. So uh, you have to have the proper amount of inventory to uh, basically feed the production line so that you can have smooth production scheduling. Uh, the third reason is to take advantage of quantity discounts. Now, uh, that makes good sense. And, and as consumers, uh, we do that, we do this as well, right? You know, if you shop at stores like Costco or Sam's Club, uh, the reason those particular retail establishments exist is they're basically playing on the need that people will buy large quantities of items if they can get significant quantity discounts, you know, whether it be paper towels, uh, whether it be uh, Coke, whether it be other food items, if you're willing to buy in large quantities and store that those large quantities in your home, you can get significant quantity discounts. Uh, and then the fourth and final reason is to hedge against anticipated price increases. Uh, here again, the example of gas stations. Gas stations might do this. They might buy um, extra gas uh, and store it in a storage tank behind their, their station if they think that the price uh, that the supplier um, is gives them is going to be going up for whatever reason. Let's say there is a, a crisis in the Middle East and oil prices are going up, which then are going to drive up um, gas prices. Uh, your gas station owner, seeing what's going on in the Middle East, might say, "Okay, I'm going to I'm going to fill up two or three storage tanks at today's price because I know in a week or so." Uh, you know the price of uh, of a barrel of oil, and then and then my particular uh, product will ultimately uh, ex experience a price hike. All right, guys, we are going to end it here. Um, this is the end of section two. I will see you in class.